All right, we're trying again, third time a charm. I'm using a different browser. Let's see, hopefully it doesn't crash. If it does, I apologize. I'll just record this video and upload it if that's the case. So far, so good. Okay, everybody. Um, looks like we're on there. Say say hi if uh, if you're there. Let me just mute this. All right, I see a hi there. I'm not sure how many people are on right now. Oh, here we go, 19 watching. All right, guys, so we're going to start in a couple of minutes here. Well, probably less than that. We'll start pretty soon. And we're going to be looking at some different colorizing things inside of Photoshop. So um, just please uh, feel to go ahead and ask any questions. I'll be happy to answer those as we go, uh, particularly at the end. Hey, Colin from New Zealand to Steve and... Meredith, hey, how's it going? Um, so what we're going to be doing is looking at different colorizing effects. So basically what we're going to do is see how we can use color. Um, I'm going to show you guys some tips on how to pick different colors that kind of contrast or work with each other. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about color theory, which seems like something that a lot of people don't really talk about. So I'm going to give you kind of a reason or a rationale why we would choose certain colors and we're not just going to do the teal and orange. <laughs> we'll go a little bit beyond that and see how we can add some drama, some mood to photographs and different images using color. And what we'll do is this is just a composite I put together um, just, just now actually. I just kind of made a fake movie poster. And I'll show you what we started with if I can get to it. If we go here essentially what I started with was let's just hide that just a basic photograph like this and then I did a whole bunch of uh, things to it to kind of give it that nice effect but what we're going to do is we're going to start with a completely different project this time so we're not even going to start with that one and we're just going to go through like we would you know if we were going to take a photograph I shot this against a white seamless uh, the previous one I shot against a black backdrop uh, but what would you do if you took the photo? I'm going to take you through the steps to make the photo pop, give it a little bit of punch. And then also we're going to go in and we're going to do some different coloring effects to make it look like there's different kinds of lighting and gels and different things like that. And, um, and you'll see how easy it is. And to me, this is actually one of my most fun things that I do inside of Photoshop. Um, I really enjoy playing around with coloring and doing this kind of phase of the project. So why don't we get started right now. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to cut out this image. And I'm going to use my favorite tool in Photoshop 2020. And if we go under our selection tool here, you'll see there's something called the object selection tool. I'm not actually going to use this, but we could drag around with the object selection tool. But inside of here, there's another option that says select subject. So I'm tapping on this select subject here. And what it's doing is it's making this selection. Now you could have done this before inside of Photoshop uh, using the quick selection in the previous versions of Photoshop uh, CC. So right now we've got a rough selection. It's not perfect yet. So what I'm going to do is use this little tool, the object selection, and we're going to use lasso. Now there's two different modes, rectangle and lasso. Don't worry, this cutout is going to go pretty fast and then we're going to get into the coloring pretty soon. So I'm going to hold the shift key and I just want to add to that selection. And I'm just making a pretty bad, very bad selection around there. In fact, let me undo that. I'm going to use my Wacom tablet because I'm trying to do that with the uh, with the other device. 
let me just get this tablet connected there we go nice okay now we're on our tablet make sure our selections active holding down the shift key I'm adding to that selection because I noticed I missed a little bit in the hair and then there's some areas here I want to add or take away from here what we're gonna do though is we're actually just gonna jump in let me just try to fix that a little bit and see if it looks any good hey not bad notice how this tool just kind of snaps to the edges it's pretty good um, we've got a shoulder there we definitely want to include that and all I'm doing is just painting in the areas I want to include but let's go on to select a mask and see what we can do here what I've done is I've got my opacity kind of just set to 50% if you bring it all the way down it goes to white or the actual background and bring it all the way up it goes solid so that's kind of transparent so I like to have it for this somewhere in the middle and I'm just going to hit the left bracket key just to kind of make this a little smaller. What I'm doing is working on this brush selection tool here. Now I know this is easy to cut out. The point of this is not to be like, oh wow, look how good I am at cutting things out. I have plenty more tutorials on how to cut out difficult objects. We're actually going to be focusing on color. So we're just quickly cutting this one out. And yes, if I am going to be doing a stage shoot, like I, I am here with a you know, cosplayer, actress, I'm going to be shooting against a white background or a black background. I'm not going to be shooting against a complex background. So, you know, as much as people say, hey, it's not always a difficult background. Well, it's not always an easy background, sorry. It's not always a difficult background either. And if you actually plan your shoot, you shouldn't be working from a difficult background. All right, so we're just making some little selections around here. Um, hey, Mark, I see you're from Belgium. And of course, if you guys have any questions or anything, drop them in there. I'll keep an eye on the chat pod there. And hopefully this one's not going to crash. So far, so good. Uh, I had a false start just a little while ago where it did crash. So hopefully this is going to be good using a different web browser. All right, so let's just change this now to a selection, new layer with a layer mask, which is my favorite one for using because this enables me to just kind of fix things afterwards with the mask. So we're just going to click OK. And here we go, we've got our cutout. Now, you know, we might want to refine it a little bit, and we can because we've got that mask there. So what I'm going to do right now is let's just do something with the background behind it. So we're just going to select this background. In fact, I'll just hit Command-J. And what I want to do is just kind of just kind of fill this. So, you know, there's different ways we could do it. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a gradient, and I'm just going to grab a black-to-white gradient just to get started. So foreground and background. Uh, and let's just kind of do it this way and then why don't we just give it a little bit of color on the other side so I'm going to do the white to transparent so we're just going to choose this now under yours you might see these under basics which is where they actually are like this when you're inside of Photoshop what I do is I just select them and drag them out so they're always at the top because this is our black to white foreground to background and foreground to transparent options I use all the time all right, so I'm just going to just drag this out a little bit. So what we're doing is just trying to give it, I don't know, some kind of a texture or just something so it's just not just a flat color behind us. And then we can turn on our model here. Now the selection is not perfect. There's different things we can do to clean up these selections. In fact, what I'll do here is I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to do the quickest one that I know. And that's actually, I'm just going to choke this mask down. So let's have a look. So if we zoom in here, we can see there's the edge there little bit of a white edge we want to get rid of it so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna blur this a little bit now I could use the feather here inside the mask and that works pretty well but for this case I'm just gonna blur the mask and you'll see why in a second so we're just gonna choose filter blur and we're just gonna grab a Gaussian blur and we're gonna give us a very very low blur like about one pixel Okay, so what that's doing is just putting an edge around that particular mask. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to choke that mask down and get rid of that white border. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply levels. Control L or Command L on Mac on the mask. So what we're doing is we're applying the level on the mask. Watch what happens on these edges when I pull these sides in. See what that does? See how I'm just pulling it in and away goes those white edges. So I'm choking that mask in and, you know, that's going to get rid of that edge. Now, I could go in here and I could spend some time making this. Obviously, we need to do some more work up here. And 
some different things like that. So let me just do it just a tiny little bit because I don't want to spend all this time, you know, masking and cutting out. But I do want to show you how we can do that. Let's just use a soft round brush. And what we want to do is just paint here with black. And that will, let's, let's see what happens here. So if we choose the black, let's hit the X key. What will happen is black will take away, see that? So from areas that you want to kind of take away, paint with black. I'm going to hit the X key, we're going to paint with white. And now this is going to enable us to bring back some areas. So I want to just kind of bring these fingers in. Now once again, I'm just going to do this rough and quick, just so you guys can just have, we can have something to work from and then just kind of, we're going to focus on our coloring. Let's just grab a little bit would be there. Probably should be using a harder brush than that. Let's take it up to about there. All right. And then you would just kind of go over your image and just kind of fix it up. It's looking pretty good for most of it. Let's just kind of paint in a shoulder. And we want to paint this in. Obviously that didn't go too well. So we just fix it up. All right. Let's do a little bit there. Great. Okay, you know what? Well, that's going to be good enough for now. So what we want to do here is just kind of focus on our coloring. And I just wanted to get a kind of a, you know, a bit of a cutout first before we do that. Hey, SL. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, let's look at some different things. Now, here's a little tip I'm going to give you for finding complementary colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go above here. We're going to create a new layer. And see, we got that new layer right there. And then what I'm going to do on this new layer is we're going to choose some colors to experiment with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the B for brush. Make sure my opacity is all the way up to 100%. And why don't we just do a soft edge brush? Just dragging the hardness down. And by the way, I can also do that by hitting the shift and left bracket key will make it hard. Shift and, uh, sorry, shift and left bracket key will make it soft and shift right bracket key will make it hard. So I can also do that on the keyboard shortcut. All right, so let's click on the color swatch. We're gonna choose a color. Let's grab something like a nice blue. Now let's find something, you know, that's a good, nice, bright blue. There we go. That's a good shade of blue right there. And now what we're going to do is, I've got that top layer selected. I'm just going to click, and that's going to give me, you know, a shade that we can work with. Say if we wanted to work with this blue. Now, if we hit Control J or Command J, Watch these steps. You're going to love these steps here. We're duplicating it. I'm just going to drag out a copy. And now I want the complementary color for this. So I already know that the complementary color, the opposite of blue, is orange. So if I hit Control or Command I to invert it, what we've done is we've inverted our colors. So now we've got complementary colors. Here's a little secret. Complementary colors will always work together. So if you've ever got a color and you're like, what color? is going to work with this, do what I did here, just make a copy of it, hit Command I for inverse, and then you're going to get that inverse color. So now you've got the complementary color, you've got blue and orange. What about the different colors? Well, here's another trick, is if I hit here and I hit the Shift key, I'm just going to select these two layers, and I'm going to put them into a group. So Control G or Command G on Mac is going to give me a group here, and there's my colors. I'm going to copy this group. So I can use the same keyboard shortcut, Command J, Control J, or I can drag this into the new layer icon and make a copy. Either way will work, and I'm going to drag this one underneath. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to hide this. Now, usually when I'm working, I'll do this on my composites, and I kind of do this towards the end of the composites, to be honest, but this is where I can kind of look and I can see my colors. Now, here's the thing. If I go in here and I choose Hue Saturation, so we're going to go and we're going to choose Hue Saturation Adjustment Layer. Notice that adjustment now is at the top of this group. So in the group, we've got two layers. We've got our blue, we've got our orange, and now we've got our Hue Saturation. So if you click on that Hue Saturation, let me drag out the properties. This is the beginning of me making a messy workspace. Trust me, by the time I'm done, it's going to be very messy. Now check this out. If I change the Hue, 
what I'm doing is I'm not just changing one color, it's changing both of them, and it's showing the complementary colors. So right now, if you're seeing the green, we can see we've got this kind of a purpley color. We can move down and notice how these colors will change together. And this is going to show you colors that are always going to work together. You've probably seen this combination of blue and yellow. So if you go into these different primaries, you'll see these colors, very, very common color combinations. Now, obviously, right now it's affecting everything underneath. And we can easily change this by just changing the group from pass through to normal. Now it's just going to change the colors and it's not affecting our image underneath. All right, cool. So why don't we do something with these colors? So let's select the colors here and we're going to start with these two. And then we're going to apply just some basic effects to get started. So what I want to do is I'm just going to create a new layer just above there. And we're going to start with the blue color. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper and select right in the middle here to make sure we've got that nice blue. And then I'm just going to use a gradient. Now I'm just going to pull the gradient across this side to about the middle. So let's just click and drag across. And now we've set some blue on one side. Great. Let's create a new layer. Let's just quickly hide that because what I want to do is sample the color from the other side, the orangey color, yellowy orange. And then we're going to grab our gradient. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Let's just click and drag across, applying some color. So if we turn these two colors on, now we've got some nice complementary colors that we can work with to add a little pizzazz and a little bit of punch to this image. All right, so why don't we put these into a group? Let's select them both and hit Control-G for group. Now, obviously, there's some things we need to do. Let's have a look under the blending mode. Let's start under the normal one here. And with this blending mode, we can move it down and we can see how different colors affect it. Notice how it's working into the background as well as our subject. That looks really nice and multiply. Let's go down here and looking at it in some other modes. Soft light's actually looking pretty good too. But I'm liking, I'm liking multiply mostly on this. Let's select the one underneath. And let's also drop that into multiply. All right, so what we're starting to do now is we're starting to create a little bit of an effect. So what I'm going to do is, obviously, we're going to hide these colors because we're not using those anymore. Now I'm going to duplicate these. So let me just select both of them. Or oh, actually, we can just select the group, hit the Alt or Option key, and let's drag that group underneath so now what we're doing is if we turn these off, you can see it's just affecting the background. We don't have any effect on our model yet. Okay, let's do that now. So let's apply these to the model. So we've got the blue, but the thing is, I don't want that blue all over the background. I just want it on that side of the model only. So let's turn the blue on. How do we do that? Well, if we hold down the Alt or the Option key, we actually, we need to pull this out of the group first. Let me pull that out of the group. Now, if I hit the Alt or the Option, notice that blue now, if we hide everything else just so you can see what's happening, notice the blue now is just going on that part of the model. Let's do the same thing with the orange, Alt or Option, and now the color here is just going on the model and it's not affecting the background. So we're going to kind of work on the background and the model with the same colors, but we're going to work on it a little bit separately because this is going to give us more control and a better effect. So, hey, how's it going? We've got Hugh, we've got Apuk, um, sorry if I said your name wrong, Upkuk, Upkuk, sorry, and we've got Raul. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, can I do that again? Yes, I can do that again. Okay, so what I've got here is if I hit the Alt or the Option key, there's our colors. I'm hiding the background, so we've just got these colors over the top, see? Now, if I hit between the two layers, and I hit the Alt and the Option key, that's going to clip that blue. Notice now it's just on our model and not on the background. The reason that works is because of the mask. So it's clipping it to the transparency. Let's do the same thing with the orange. Go between it, hold the Alt or the Option, and you'll see this little arrow. Click, and now we've got that on our model. All right, so why don't we have a look and see if a different blend mode maybe looks better on our model. 
So if we go here, we can look, you know, hey, maybe these brighter colors look good on the model. Well, let's try screen. And let's do the same thing here. What, what would screen look like here? It's not bad. I kind of like... Lighten looks pretty good, too. So you always want to experiment with these different blending modes because sometimes, you know, people could say just use overlay mode all the time, but sometimes what looks good for a lighter color doesn't necessarily look so good for a darker color. So we're using overlay. So what I want to do, though, is I want to mainly have this affecting the highlight areas and not the shadow areas. So here's another tip. If we go under the FX and we click on Blending Options, we can bring up our Advanced Blending. And if we look here, we can drag our highlights. This is our highlights here on this layer. If we drag those across, take it till it disappears. Now I'll hit the Alt or the Option key. That'll split that triangle. And let's bring it back. And what we're doing here, notice now we're just kind of getting it more in the highlight areas instead of the whole image. See how that color is just affecting it? It's starting to look a little bit more natural, like we've actually got a gelled light and we're not just, you know, throwing color randomly on things. All right, so let's go down to the next one. We're going to choose the blue layer. We have to apply this first. Under the blue layer, we're going to do the same thing. Let's grab our FX. Then we're going to click on Bevel and Emboss. And let's see what happens if we pull this. Notice nothing's happening till we get there. Let's go right up to there. Alter option. Let's split that. And there we go. See how now it's starting to hit the highlights. And we can control just how much of that you want to hit. Just by moving it here. You see how we've got pretty nice kind of coloring effect is starting to happen here. As if we're using colored gels on our model here. Now, of course, if something's too strong, that's why we have things like layer masks and opacity. We could turn the opacity off and just turn it up a little bit. So if we wanted to just go subtle, we could go like this. You know, and that would give us a more subtle effect. But I'm going to go pretty strong for now because I really want to make it clear what we're working on. So we can go later on, you know, if we want to do stuff like, you know, dial it back. We, we can when we're finished. And it uh, looks like we've got somebody else hey, from Tennessee there, Jay Wade. Nice to see you. I'll be out your way next week. Not in Tennessee, but I'm going to be in Virginia and North Carolina. Anyway, let's go down here and we're going to put our color on the background. So notice we've got that color. I just want to kind of take these colors though and I want to just mish them up a little bit more. That's, that's a technical term, mish. <laughs> so I'm selecting them, holding the shift key, selecting the second one, and I just want to merge these two together. Control E will do that. And notice when you do that, you lose your blending mode. So you want to go back in here and just play around with these different blending modes once again. You could be doing the multiply. You can see different ones. And we'll experiment with these in a little bit. So what I want to do is I actually want to blur these. So I'm going to choose filter, and I'm going to blur these. Give it a Gaussian blur. And what it's doing by blurring these up, what it's going to do is it's just going to mix them together a little bit smoother. So there we go. So now we're just getting a little bit of a smoother blend between the different um, different layers. So what I want to do now is I need to give this a little bit more mood, a little bit more punch. So I'm going to create some kind of a vignette, but it's going to be a little bit different. So let's select here. We're going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill it with black. So let's hit the D key to reset foreground background colors. And I'm going to hit the Alt backspace to fill it with black. Now I'm going to grab the elliptical marquee tool. And I'm just going to make a little bit of an oval. Now, if you want to move this while you're drawing, hold down the space bar. And we can just kind of go over here. And let's make it a little smaller. And we're going to go here, and now we're going to fill with white. So that's Option. Uh, actually, that's Command Delete. That would be Control Backspace on Windows, and Control D, Command D to turn it off. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to give it a little bit of a blur. So we're going to choose Filter, 
blur grab a Gaussian blur and we don't want it all the way up to a thousand although that's kind of cool we do want a big one but what we're doing is just creating a little bit more mood or you know kind of almost like a spotlight effect so let's go like that looking good now I'm gonna take this layer and I'm just gonna drag it out of the layer group we don't need that layer group anymore I'm just kind of showing that for a fact so now let's see what we can do with blending some of these together first of all what can we do with this let's see if any blending modes really work well for us I'm just going to put that into multiply and pull down the opacity just a little bit so now we've got just a little bit more kind of texture going on in the background let's drop our color on top and let's see what we get with different blending modes and this is where it kind of gets fun when we start to get into some of these other areas see how we're starting to get some cool just kind of nice effects and then you know it kind of comes down to you know what kind of a mood do we want you know because color burn actually works some of these other ones work quite well if you want a brighter one you're going to go with the light nor screen and sometimes these look good if i take that and drop the opacity down a little bit let me show you see how we can kind of get some cool effects going on there but let's go down to things like overlay we're getting a little bit more moody let's go with a moodier one with the overlay all right now i want to have something that's just a little bit more pop kind of happening behind our model here so what we're going to do is we're going to make a selection i'm just going to hit the control or command key and click on there and i've loaded a selection let's put a layer underneath and i'm just going to fill that with white control delete now you won't see much happening because it's right there where our model is so let's uh filter it a little bit so let's choose filter we're going to use distort and we're going to apply a ripple and what this is going to do is it's just going to give us a little bit of a you know an effect around the edges make sure you set the size to large click ok and notice we get this kind of wiggly kind of thing that's all right that's what we want now we're going to add a blur choose filter blur apply a Gaussian blur Gaussian blur now if we make it small what it's going to start to do if we get it just in the right spot there we go see how it's got these kind of light kind of coming off there let's give it just a little bit more there we go so now it has this kind of a glow around it but it's got you know a bit more of an electric glow instead of just a flat glow and uh, and this kind of almost looks like the Bailey's beads from a <laughs> from a uh, what you call it an eclipse so let's do another copy control J or command J to make another copy of that and then we're going to blur this and make it bigger so let's choose filter blur choose our Gaussian blur and we're going to give this this is going to be our glow all right so see how that looks a lot more exciting than just applying you know an, an outer blur or an outer glow and then we're going to add a little color to it so command u for hue saturation now i'm going to pull the saturation all the way up we're not going to see any color yet because this is pure white so if you see the lightness slider inside of the hue saturation it's there for a reason the reason it's there is so we can add color so if we've got black and we want to add color we'll increase the lightness if we have white and we want to add color we'll decrease the lightness watch what happens as I do that as I decrease it notice it allows some of that color through but only if I turn on colorize there we go let's pull the saturation all the way back up and now when I pull it down notice now we get some color there we go and now we can change the hue and we can go to whatever color we want so if we wanted an electric blue around there we could now let's do that and let's play around with the opacity let's bring it down just a little bit so we've got that kind of glow is kind of happening behind our model all right so I feel like we want to do a little bit more here though we certainly don't have anywhere near where we want to be as far as being finished so what we want to do is go up the top here at the very very top I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer now I'm going to drag this curve above it so it's affecting everything underneath 
In fact, no, I don't want to do that. Let me put it here. So it's just affecting this layer. And let's just give it a little bit of notice as we play around here. We give it a little bit of punch. Oh, hang on a sec. Let's go about there. And let's do some things with the color. So let's go into the blues. Now we can dial in. See how it's changing the color of everything? Don't worry about it changing the color of our model. We can mask this out later if we want. So let's give that a little bit of punch there in the blues. Let's go to our reds. And notice now we're really starting to affect these colors. Kind of like that warmer kind of burnt look. And our greens. It's kind of fun. Now remember, because these are curves, we can always come back at any time and we can change these because these are non-destructive. Now obviously we didn't want to have our model like that. So what we can do is we can actually take our mask from our model. If I click on this and I drag it up to the curves, holding down the Alt or the Option key, I can replace that mask with our mask here. Now notice that it's a little weird because it's changing the wrong thing. Easily fixed. We hit Control or Command I. There we go. And now our model is not being affected and we're just affecting the color everywhere else. Now I want a little bit of this color to go through into the model. So here's the thing. Have you ever seen the slider under our properties, under our mask called density? Density enables us to allow a little bit of that color through. If we turn the density all the way down, notice the mask is doing nothing. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit and allow some of this color to come through. Notice what it does on the mask is it actually changes it to, um, to gray. In fact, let me show you. If I hit the Option key and I click on here, this is what density does. It changes the gray on the mask and enables us to mix it with the unmasked version of it, if that makes sense. And then we just click back on here to do that. So now we're putting a little bit of that color in there on top of the other one. So this give, now gives us the flexibility to you know, do things like change the different colors and change the different tones now without affecting our model. So let's go back in here. Let's go back into our reds. And notice how we can really make these reds strong if we want now into the highlights and see it's not messing up our model. Let's put just a little bit in there. I want some in there so it kind of feels like you know she's she's gelled and then if we go down here we're going to choose the blue. Let's go into the blue. Let's increase the blue. See how you can really make that pop. And so at this point here it's just you know we can go in and we can change these colors however we want just going in here you know, obviously I'm going really hard, probably a little too much, but just to kind of show you guys the effect. So we can go, you know, different kinds of colors here. And I'm just in the green. Now, if you want to cycle through the colors, you're just going to go up the top and you're just going to create another adjustment. We we'll call it the hue saturation. And this way we can cycle through. What we want to do is grab this mask, though, Alt or Option, drag that. Replace that mask. And if we go under our hue saturation now, we can change the hue and now we can just go through, look at this and get different looks immediately. So if you feel like it's too saturated, bring the saturation down. Or you could go crazy with it. I wouldn't recommend that. We can play around with these kind of things here and now see how we can do just the different types of colors. You can just cycle through, find the color that you want. You know, Christmas time and just kind of apply these different looks. So let me just go to this one here. I'm just going to revert this. And this is one I just worked on before, which was a little bit darker kind of uh, um, a look. I just did a fake movie poster. I just you know made this this morning really for this. And notice I'm doing exactly the same things here. And I'm just, but what I did is I just added more layers on here. And essentially this is what we're going to do with the other one. As we start to add more layers, we can start to get different types of effects. And then, you know, here's our vignette. 
One of the other things I did here is I added a texture in here just to give it a little bit more punch. And then, you know, here I created these fake laser beams. Let me show you how I did that. Just create a new layer here. Just grab a brush with white on it. And you can just kind of draw a little bit. And then we add a blur to it. Watch this. Just choose the filter blur. And then we do our motion blur. And notice the things we can do. Motion blur is really, really powerful for this kind of thing. Look at the type of effects we get. These flare effects just by um, adding that motion blur. And of course, you know, you can change the angle of these. And then sometimes I'll just go really hard like that. And then you can just notice it tapers at the end so you can get these kind of flares, see that? And then if I hit the Alt or the Option key, I can make a copy of it. You know, even place another copy over the top. And that's how you just kind of get these flare effects. Um, the smoke is just a image. Let me show you here. And if we go up here, this is just regular. Uh, let's have a look there. We've got that normal, turn the opacity all the way up. And uh, Steve, I agree with you. It's amazing what you can do with the right light techniques. Just playing around with the different blend modes and blurs and different things like that. You can do some really cool things. I agree. So here we go, I've just got a smoke background with just an image um, that I grabbed from Adobe Stock, but also I've shot stuff like this before, just shoot against a back, black background, just get some smoke, um, put it out there, a little smoke machine or whatever. And then to isolate it, we just change the blend mode. Notice if we go under here, lighten mode, screen. Lighten and screen is pretty much where you're gonna be, screen most of the time, and that just hides the black. And then we've got this kind of smoke effect you know we could put there we could mask it out if we wanted we could change the opacity so you could just make it very faint you can make it very strong one of the things i like to do is apply a mask let's hit the x key we're going to grab a black brush nice big brush here and with the black let's bring the opacity down to about 30 percent or there are there are less this enables me to just reduce the amount of smoke in certain areas. So if you wanted to go over across, now we're going 60%. And notice what I'm doing here is I'm reducing the amount of smoke over the front of our model. And you can see it's it's more solid behind here. Uh, let me just make that brush a little smaller. And by doing this, what it does is it gives the impression that the smoke is not necessarily just above her. You can see now it looks like the smoke is above, behind, it's kind of weaving through her. So just playing around with different levels of opacity on there, you can kind of do that. So anyway, this is you know a bunch of different techniques I'm just kind of throwing at you guys. Um, all of them really dealing with color, but you know, I guess Steve hit it on the head. It's color, but it's also um, light so we're just kind of using light to get these kind of color effects now obviously I'm doing a fake movie poster this is the same kind of a thing you could apply to you know any photographs you could go very um, strong with it you know go for something like this or you could just go very subtle and use it to colorize photos and add that little bit of wow that people um, maybe are not so used to seeing all the time maybe it gives something a little unique to your images for me it's stuff I love playing around with it uh, so the things I would do is just experiment with different layers, blending modes, opacity, and stuff like that. Um, so we've got some questions and stuff here. By the way, guys, if you've got a question, please drop it in there. I'll be happy to answer it. Photoshop question, of course. Um, so what do we got here? Oh, Jay Wade, you got to go back to work. It's okay. Um, it will be here on the channel. So uh, they always save it on here. So you can come back to the YouTube channel and start watching it anytime you want. Um, hi Colin, this is great having a live session. It's a new thing for Photoshop Cafe. Uh, it's, it's an experiment. We've done a couple. That's for Jennifer. We've, we've done a couple of these in the past. I haven't done one for a long time. Just got a new system, new computer, and uh, installed the software on it. And I figured, why not give it a shot? I'm traveling tomorrow. I was going to do this into a tutorial. And I decided, well, rather than doing the tutorial and editing it and doing all that, why don't we do it live and, and see what happens? So, you know, we'll see. Uh, if you guys want to see more of these, let me know. And maybe it's something we can do on a more regular basis, but it's not something I really planned on yet. Um, but 
to answer your question, will there be a live session every week? I don't know yet. Um, but I do know that generally on Tuesdays, I upload a new tutorial. And if I don't make it on Tuesdays, I get it up on Wednesday. So I've been pretty good. I haven't missed one of those in a long, long time. Um, so I don't know. Maybe if you guys want it, you know, let me know. We'll see, you know, also people watching the replay. Um, you know, if we see likes and we see comments and people want to see this, then uh, I will consider doing it more regular. Um, so anyway, guys, let's have a look here, see if there's any more questions. Uh, from Australia, hey, how's it going? Um, I hope you're okay with the fires and everything over there. It's really sad. Um, so I hope you're, you know, being safe. Um, nice idea, might be an idea to take a famous poster and recreate effects. Yeah, with that, that would be a fun thing to do as well. We could definitely do something like that. So anyway, guys, I don't know if you're new here or you just saw this. Um, if you guys are subscribers, maybe you got this from the um, notifications. If you did, awesome. If you're just browsing and you're not part of the Cafe Crew, uh, hit the subscribe button and also turn on a notification so you'll know when I do these live streams and also when I upload tutorials. And I see um, that's uh, Glenn's from Greater London, UK. Welcome. And Tatiana from Bulgaria, welcome. And we have Dr. Har. I'm gonna be bad on your name. Harshwar, Harshwarden, Harshwarden, I think. Dr. Harshwarden from India. Thank you for joining us. And uh, Jay Wade from Knoxville. I don't know if I said that. So anyway, guys, this was just kind of a little experiment to see how it would go doing one of these live streams. Like I said, I haven't done one of these in a while. And uh, if it's something you guys like and it's something you want to see more regular, let me know. And uh, so I guess I'll be signing off for now. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, you know what I'm going to say, right? I'll see you at the cafe.